For years, I've always used coax that most hams use. RG58 for HF, although it gets lossy up around the 10 meter band. RG213 for those slightly longer HF runs and also the shorter VHF runs. LMR400 for VHF and above, although it gets unwieldy and it's stiff and it's really hard to manage. And for the even higher frequencies or longer runs, I mainly use Andrew's Heliax, which is LDF450. But recently I've been hearing more and more about Messi and Poloni's coaxial cables. These cables have major distinct advantages over the more common cables that we might use and I'm going to show you what they are. Everything I knew about coax was wrong. Messi and Poloni manufacture and sell high quality coax, connectors and accessories out of Italy. They'll do custom cables or they will also sell by the meter. They have full data sheets and information on their website for all of their cables too. Now this is Hyper Flex Cable. Uh, as you can see, it is super, super flexible. It features a UV resistant PVC jacket, copper clad aluminium braid, and a copper foil which provides excellent shielding. And the dielectric is foam polyethylene with a multi-core copper inner conductor and all of the data sheets on these cables are available on the M&P website. Now I've got two versions of this cable today. This is the Hyperflex 5, which is very similar in size to RG58 or uh, LMR, LMR240 as a bit of a comparison there. And I've also got the Hyperflex 10, which is a little bit bigger as you could see. Uh, now this cable is similar to RG213 or LMR400. Now this cable in particular actually got me out of a bit of a bind because I had a contest recently last weekend and I needed some cable to attach to my 2.4 gigahertz antenna uh, and I managed to use this cable. Now I had a run of about 15 meters and it ended up being around about 3 dB of loss um, but it worked quite well and the added benefit was is that it was really flexible so I could easily run it through the house temporarily whereas if I used LMR 400 it would have been a bit unwieldy and it would have been hard to manage so just demonstrating the flex there it is really flexible so this cable is also very handy for around rotators and other uh, tight spots that you might need it for as well now I'm serious about this cable it is tons and tons better than RG 58 or RG 213 um, I mean, you can compare it, as I said, I compared it to LMR400, but even then LMR400 is not that flexible unless you buy the ultra flex version of LMR400. But then you get the connectors and depending on where you get the connectors from, it can be poor quality depending on where you buy them. Now, speaking of connectors, these are an absolute breeze to install. You can see there that these connectors are a clamp compression type connector from m and Now, I, I'm usually been a fan of crimp connectors, but crimp connectors, they can come loose over time. Again, it depends on the quality of coaxial cable, uh, coaxial cable connector that you get. Um, you can get all sorts of varied connectors. You have to end up re-terminating them, especially if they're an internet connect cable in the shack that you're undoing and doing all the time, or if it's portable and you're unscrewing and screwing it into your radio all the time, the connector can come loose. But with the MNP uh, connector that you could see here, these clamp connectors, they are a compression type connector and they will not come off this cable. It, it, it will show you the breakdown of these connectors uh, a little bit later on. Now, in addition to, I got these coax scissors. These are special coax scissors from Messi and Poloni as well. These uh, allow precision cutting of the cable, the outer jacket, the inner dielectric, and also the trimming of the braid. Now, these scissors, they have, they're have not like normal scissors. They've actually got a bit of tension on them so that you don't slice through the cable um, like regular scissors uh, would do. They're also a little bit better than using a knife. A knife can also uh, pierce the, uh, the jacket or can pierce the inner dielectric or even the inner conductor when you're cutting through it. But these allow you to just set the right amount of tension to be able to trim the cable. Um, I've never actually seen scissors like these before and I'm actually surprised it's taken me so long to discover them. So um, yeah, these are absolutely fantastic. And in actual fact, this is the only tool that you need along with a soldering iron to be able to put a connector on one of these cables. Oh, actually, I lie. You do need a couple of extra tools. You need a couple of spanners to do up the clamp connector. That is one thing that I did forget, but that's not too bad. The coax scissors, couple of spanners and a soldering iron and you're good to go. So when looking at coax, you usually look at specifications such as loss or power handling. They're usually the two main ones. 
Uh, loss is usually the main one. Now, I've done some tables here showing the loss of Hyperflex cable compared to RG and also LMR type cables. So if we have a quick look here, you can see that RG58 is in red, LMR240 uh, is in green, and the Hyperflex 5, which is the, uh, the Messi and Poloni cable, that is in blue. So what I've done is I've just done the loss here. The power handling, if you're interested in that, full specifications are available on the website. I've broken it down. Usually you see loss per 100 meters, but I've done it for 10 meters because it's more of a... It's more of a, a, a length that we would use uh, commonly, I suppose. So you can see here 10 megs, half a dB with RG58, but the LMR240 and the Hyperflex is very, very close in loss. And that goes all the way up to about 400 megahertz there as well. So you could see there 4.1 dB loss for 10 meters using RG58, but only 1.6 dB loss or so for the uh, the LMR and Hyperflex. So it's very, very close to the LMR. The same for the uh, Hyperflex 10, that's very similar to RG213, uh, sorry, uh, LMR 400. RG213, it's uh, got slightly more loss. So you can see here that at uh, 10 megahertz, the, the loss is really, really low. But when you get up to like VHF and above, so say uh, two meters, 144 megahertz, 0.75 dB loss per 10 meters. Uh, 0.47 dB loss for the Hyperflex. Again, all very similar to the LMR cable. 3 dB of loss is half of your power, so just keep that in mind. So anything that's less than about 2 dB, 1.5 dB is where you really want to aim for. Anything less than that is absolutely fantastic. Uh, but obviously, the more loss you have, the more your power is going to be wasted in both directions, just in the transmit and also in the receive direction as well. So once you lose it, you can't get it back. So you can buy directly from Messi and Poloni's website. Uh, there's a link in the description below if you want a 5% off your order. You can use the coupon code VK7HH, my call sign in the checkout and you will get 5% off of your order. So these are a bit of an example of the connectors that are from Messi and Poloni. These are the compression uh, fit connectors. These are the PL259s. And you can see that they come in these nice bags. Um, but on the back, they've got the full instructions on how to actually um, terminate the cable. There's also a little QR code that you've that you notice up here too that you can scan and it goes to a video to show you how to put it together. Uh, but yeah, the full instructions are there at the back, very easy to follow. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the bench and I'm going to show you the breakdown of the connectors to just show you how good a quality they are. So basically, you can see here the center pin is just soldered onto the end of the uh, the coax. There is a little white spacer here that sits down underneath the connector and um, all of this is detailed on the instruction sheet which is here you basically put that little white connector on and then you slide the center pin on and then once you've soldered it on you slide this second one on which basically sits over the top and acts as a bit of a spacer so that when you actually put the connector on it means that the pin the center pin will always be central rather than just moving around or um, anything like that. So that's uh, that's very, very well thought out. There's also this little collar here which sits down, if I move this rubber boot out the way, this little collar sits down underneath the uh, jacket and also pushes down onto the braid. So that just makes sure that the no braid can actually protrude up and, uh, and affect the um, center pin or short out on the center pin. You got this black uh, plastic or black rubber, sorry, which is uh, like a little bit of a rubber compression rubber spacer. Uh, a metal spacer, which basically just is to um, space out the connector for the uh, collar, which does up um, when you put the connector on. And basically, yeah, once, you, once you've once you soldered that on, you've cut the cable to all the correct dimensions, which is all specified here on the card. Or again, if you want to watch the video, just scan the QR code. Once you've got them all all right, you basically just slide that on, do this up, and then uh, the rubber boot here on the back uh, adds a little bit of compression as well. Uh, the, the rubber this way is also compressing to clamp down and provide that compression on this connector. And um, I've just only done it hand tight and it's already quite tight. Uh, I could, obviously I'll get uh, some shifters in to do that uh, a bit later on, but that 
is one awesome excellent end connector and and a great assembly to put together so they've really thought about this um that's the on the this is on the hyperflex 10 cable so yeah it's uh it's absolutely excellent and these uh these connectors are very very high quality um they've also got the pl 259s as well these are a little bit bigger than regular 259s if you use crimp or even soldable connectors the um they're all uh, they're all part of this assembly here, but as you can see, uh, very very high quality cables. And I I've, I'm now converted. I'm converted to the clamp um, to these compression clamps. These are much better than the crimps. Um, I I think that this is this is definitely the way forward for me, at least in my shack. I'm absolutely blown away with the quality of the Messi and Poloni um, cables and the products. It's high quality cable that is used all around the world. I can personally recommend this cable for your station. If you're thinking about investing in your station, then don't skimp on cheap coax and cheap connectors because if you get the right stuff the first time, it's, it's worthwhile the investment. You don't have to worry about it later on. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, you know, going bad or having high loss or having dodgy connectors. Um, maybe it might disintegrate in the in the uh, in the weather outside. You can trust that Messi and Poloni products are going to be the ones that are going to stand the test of time. Now there is a de expedition being done by the three Y zero J team to Bouvet Island. That is one of the most remote places. On Earth, and they're actually going to be using Messi and Poloni coaxial cable. Messi and Poloni are actually one of the sponsors of the D Expedition. Now, if you want to find out why they trust that this cable can hold up to one of the most harshest conditions on Earth, then follow me over to this video right here.